So if the last time you checked out Lerna was in version 4 or even older versions than that, then definitely stick around because we are going to have a look what the whole new modern Lerna is all about. So let's go. So this is a very simple setup where I have a packages folder and three packages in it. So this is our small monorepo. We have a footer package, which is completely independent package. It has its own dependencies. It has its own build and test scripts. And similarly, we have a header package and a remix application. And the remix application is supposed to consume those two packages and use them locally in a monorepo setup. So how can we add learner to this one? I think learner is actually pretty easy. All we need to do is run the learner init command, and this will configure our workspace in a monorepo setup. Now, Luna has its own bootstrapping mechanism or had its own bootstrapping mechanism, but nowadays there's NPM workspaces, Yarn workspace or PNPM workspaces, so we should definitely rely on that. And in fact, the default setup of what Luna provides us is with such an NPM workspace in this case. So you can immediately see that if you go into the package JSON. First of all, there's a new dev dependency pointing to Luna now, but then we also have this workspaces setup, which is exactly what and how you configure an NPM workspace. So this basically tells NPM that you have such packages that live locally here. And then for instance, if our Remix app in the package.json references these packages, they will be fetched locally and linked locally rather than being pulled from some remote NPM repository. Furthermore, there's a learner.json, which is basically the configuration file for learner, which has a very minimum setup here. So all it does is first of all to set that use workspaces to true, meaning that it did the first the whole package dependency management to NPM workspaces in this case, and then there's simply a version that is set to zero at the moment. Now to get started, let me first run NPM install such that we initialize our new NPM workspace based on what Learner has set up. So now that we have installed Learner, we can actually go and explore some of the features. Now Learner underneath is being powered in this version by NX. So what we can already leverage is, for instance, the visualization of the workspace. So we can go ahead and run NX graph in this case. And what this would do is actually open up a local browser window where we can then explore our current workspace and the structure of it. So this is a simple setup where, again, you can see the Remix app, which over the package JSON here references the footer as well as the header package. Similarly, let's go ahead and run all the projects and all the builds for the projects in this workspace. So we can just run learner run build, and you will now see a bit of a different terminal output, which is kind of dynamic showing what is being built. And it only shows the actual build progress and nothing really more. So you can really focus, especially if you have multiple projects, what is going on. In addition to that, obviously, if an error would occur, you would definitely see that error print out as a whole stack trace there. In a similar fashion, we can also run all the tests of the project. So we'll see all the various tests of the header, footer, and remix app being run. So apart from those improvements on the terminal output, one of the more powerful features that come with the modern learner setup is built-in caching capabilities. This is definitely something you would want to have in a modern monorepo solution. Now, by default, this caching is not enabled because it really depends on the structure of your workspace and in particular, what cacheable operations there are. So in, in specific, what I'm intending here is the package JSON scripts that we see in those package JSON files. We need to tell Lerna which of those are cacheable and which are not. Now we could either configure this by hand or which is much more handy is to run just the Lerna at caching command. And so you can see now it presents us with the package scripts that are in our monorepo. And it asks us the first question, which one of those need to be run in topological order? So meaning, for instance, if we run build and we run it for our Remix app, well, this should run in topological order because it should first run the builds of header and footer, and those could be parallelized, and then run the build script actually of the parent project, which is Remix app in this case. So this is definitely something that we would want run in topological order. Tests on the other side are pretty independent usually, so we can leave them as is. Which ones are cacheable? Well, build tests for sure. Dev and start are more for spinning up your, our development server, so those would not be cacheable. Finally, what is the output? We could actually specify here a path, but most of the paths are being recognized by Learner already. So common paths like build and this are already being configured properly. So let's just confirm this process. And what we get out of this is an NX.json file, which basically contains all those configurations. So we see here the casual operations, and we also see here the configuration of so-called task pipeline, meaning that 
whenever we run build, it would run build for all its dependent projects. And this that carrot symbol in front here that gives that information. And so we exactly achieved the fact that we don't have to run the build of the child's first, but it will happen automatically via this build pipeline configuration. So let's actually try this out and run the learner build command, but scope it to the Remix app. Now, given that we have set up this build pipeline, it should first run it for its header and footer packages and then the Remix app itself. And in fact, if you run this, you can see it runs first two tasks before the actual build, and then it runs the actual Remix build itself. So you can see that in total, it ran two tasks that depended on the overall Remix app build. The cool part is also, if we now, for instance, run the build of our projects, it would be immediate because this is now caching kicking in because we have built both footer, header, and remix app. We didn't really change anything. You can see how fast then the build output is. Now, the caching doesn't just restore the console log output, obviously, but also the potential artifacts that get produced. For instance, in the remix app here, we see that build folder. And so if we go and remove that build folder, and we run the build of our applications again and packages, you would see that build folder gets restored. And this even works for nested files as well. So if we rerun it, you would see that single file gets restored. And Luna is very cautious about restoring those things by looking at only rewriting files to the file system that are not there already. Now, by default, Learner recognizes build and this folder that are most commonly used, but you can actually fine tune that. What you could do is you could go to the actual annex JSON file and add here an outputs property and specify further paths that you would want to specify. For instance, you could say in the project route, you want to include the build folder or some other custom folder such that Learner gets that additional metadata and is able to also monitor and restore those specific folder and files. You can even use glob patterns in here. Now, such a setting would hold globally for all potential build tasks, but you can also even scope it to a specific package. You could go to the package JSON here of Remix, for instance, and go, for instance, to the very bottom of the file and include here a node that is called NX because it acts the underlying task runner used by Lerna. And then in a similar fashion, specify that for the build target, the outputs are the following that should be monitored and restored. So you can really in a fine grade manner, configure it per package or just globally on an NXJSON file. And you can keep configuring more of those. For instance, if we go here to the Remix app package JSON file, then you will notice that we have here that dev script that launches our Remix build server. Well, if we reference our header packages in the Remix application, then we would want also up and start of our server to actually run first the build of the header and the footer package. Well, we can do just the very same thing that we did for the build one, copy this one here, name this here dev, and so with this, we express that whenever we run the dev task, we would also need to run the builds first of the dependent projects, in this case, header and footer. So to see how this actually all works, let's actually go to the Remix app here. Let's go to the index route. And here we see the header and footer is already being imported and implemented. We also see here that those packages are being referenced. So all we can do is actually now run the dev scripts of this Remix app. So let's run learn our run dev and we scope it to the Remix app, which would now run the Remix server in development mode. And so on localhost 3000, we see now our actual application running where it shows here the header part, the actual content in the application and the photo part. Now, one of the main reasons why Learner is so widely adopted and used, it's because of its automation around the versioning and publishing of packages. Now, in our specific setup here, we have leveraged the local NPM workspace to reference packages. But for instance, the footer and header package could actually also be pushed to some NPM repo such that they can also be used outside of our specific monorepo. This gets even more important if you use such a monorepo setup for the sole purpose of developing your open source packages, where the main goal is to ultimately publish and distribute them to some NPM registry. So let's see how Learner can help there. So Learner comes with different commands to do exactly that. The one of them is Learner version, which you can run to increment your version of the packages. And this can be done in independent mode where each package can be versioned independently or where each version of the package is synchronized between them. You can rather also just use the publishing process that would then increment the version and in addition also push to some NPM registry. 
So for instance, in our case, if we run publish, then also what we want to give it is the no private flag. Because for instance, our remix setup here is something that we would not necessarily want to publish to NPM. And so what we have done here is to set the private flag in the package JSON. And so Learner respects that. And if we run now the no private, it would ignore the remix app package. So based on the situation of our workspace and the versions of the various packages, Learner proposes here a couple of options that we could go with. So in our case, let's go actually with a pre-major. So we can select that. Learner shows how the packages would be incremented in terms of their versions. So we confirm that. And with that, Learner now creates tags, pushes them to our GitHub repo, as well as to our NPM repository. Now I'm using here a local Verdasho setup to not push it to a public one. So if I go there and refresh, you can now see we have to do packages with the corresponding version published there. So hopefully this gave you a nice overview of what the modern learner experience is all about. If you want to dig deeper and learn some more stuff, definitely go to learner.js.org on the new documentation site. And if you're still on version 4 or older, check out the reference video here for how to upgrade your existing modern repo very easily to get all these modern features.